By this time, you guys may have seen all the Zen 2 reviews out there. And at least around here at the studio, I could really only get my 3700X and also the 3900X to 4.3 gigahertz all core clocks. The 9900K, it does go to five gigahertz, but for a while, you guys have asked me to clock these CPUs at the same levels and check out performance. And today that's exactly what we're going to do, where we're putting the 9900K at four gigahertz and also the 3700X at four gigahertz to see how they perform in both productivity and gaming numbers. Now for the memory, I am using 3600 CL16 memory. And then for the GPU, we've got an RTX 2080 Ti. Then let's pull up some benchmarks for you guys though. Before we do that, a quick message from today's video sponsor, Wix. If you guys want to make a professional looking website that costs absolutely nothing, then check out the link in the description below. For me personally, I started using this. It's so easy to build a website, whether you're a professional or a beginner who hasn't built a website before using the integrated tools that they have available. Simply drag and drop things in that you like and don't like, and pretty much the builder will do all the heavy work for you and then leave you with a final product that looks professional and more importantly, doesn't cost you anything at all. If you guys are anything into desktop PCs or even informational for that matter, then you can get building today using the link in the description below, wix.com slash go slash tech yes city. With that aside, let's get back to the video. So getting into the gaming benchmarks first, I thought it would be a one way landslide in terms of Zen 2, since we saw in my initial review that I did that AMD had an IPC advantage over Intel. So putting these CPUs both at four gigahertz, at least in the case of Tom Clancy's The Division 2 will pull up the first game, where we saw that the Intel, even at four gigahertz, was scoring slightly higher FPS than that of the 3700X. The 1% and 0.1% lows were looking perfectly normal, though moving over to CSGO, here is a game that sort of makes this whole thing a lot more interesting, because we can see here that the 3700X actually came out with the victory here when both these CPUs are at four gigahertz. 475 average FPS, 114 1% low, 92.1% .1 low. Then moving over to Intel, they got 451 average FPS. So scoring about 25 FPS lower than that of the 3700X. And now here's the kicker with CSGO. I've done a heap of latency testing here on the channel with a thousand FPS camera, and this game is a very responsive engine. So if anything, looking into the latency situation, Zen 2 has definitely made a lot of improvements in terms of reducing the latency on their CPU architecture. And this means that it's showing through in a game like CSGO, where AMD have gone back to the developers and re-optimized that title for their CPU architecture. And it's showing with the victory that's relating to the IPC gains that we saw in say, for instance, the Cinebench R20, which we'll pull up later. But this was the one title that showed the true potential, in my opinion, of the 3700X over the 9900K. But moving on now to GTA 5, here we see the swing slightly in favor of the Intel, scoring 162 average FPS. And then going over to the 3700X, 158 average FPS, very close. But again, this is a game that is quite a few years old. And I don't believe that AMD have gone back with the developers and re-optimized this game for their architecture. But it is good to see that Zen 2 is keeping up with the 9900K. Next up is Dota 2 with the graphical settings max completely. And we see here we've got 207 average FPS on the 9900K versus 200 on the 3700X, both at four gigahertz. The 1% and 0.1% lows are looking very similar too. So it's pretty much an even match in this game. And to my knowledge, AMD have gone back and re-optimize this title. But of course, just going back and re-optimizing a title may not show the true potential of that CPU since the game, at least in previous testing I've done on OpenGL on Linux, actually runs a lot better than it does on Windows 10, regardless of the API in Windows 10. Next up, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider DX11 1080p high settings. We see here 109 average FPS, 57 minimum, and then over to the 3700X, 95 average, 48 minimum. I find this one the most odd out of the bunch since I do believe AMD did work with the developers of Shadow of the Tomb Raider to make it optimized for their gear, but maybe that was just on the GPU side of things. But let's pull up the next title here, Far Cry New Dawn, where the Intel scored 131 average FPS, 95 minimum, and then over to the 3700X, 119, and then an 89 minimum. And this is one of those titles that I do believe they are reusing a very old engine 
that they haven't updated for quite some time. So again, what we're seeing here with the trends is the games that are optimized, and especially when they pay attention to AMD, focusing on CSGO and also Dota 2, we see that it either comes very close to the 9900K, or in the case of CSGO, it's beating the Intel CPU. And as I said before with CSGO, that's showing that Zen 2's potential can be really good if the developers do optimize their titles for their CPU architecture. But now moving over to productivity, here's where the 3700X starts to flex its muscles a lot more than the gaming benchmarks. Uh, pulling up V-Ray for you guys first up, we got 68 seconds on the CPU score versus 73 seconds on the 9900K, scoring a five second advantage, and then the GPU scores were the same using that 2080 Ti. Then over to Cinebench R20, the multi-threaded scores were heavily in favor of the Ryzen 3000 3700X, and then the single core speeds also showed a big advantage too. Moving over to Geekbench 4, however, we saw the single threaded score actually beat that of the 3700X on the 9900K, then the multi-threaded score did go to that of the 3700X. Moving over to 7-Zip, we saw a victory for the Zen 2 CPU, both on the compression side and the decompression side. And then next up, we had Corona 1.3. I like to call it Corona, just after that special beer that I usually like to drink once in a while. And we saw here one minute and 50 seconds versus one minute and 49 seconds. So very close battle in this particular rendering benchmark. Then over to Adobe Premiere Pro, a 4K video render file, 50 megabits per second bitrate with a maximum of 150. We score six minutes and two seconds on the Intel side versus four minutes and 52 seconds on the 3700X side of things. So this was a big victory for the Zen 2 CPU. Then over to DaVinci Resolved, showed a similar trend with the AMD CPU pulling out by almost a minute in this particular benchmark. Then the last benchmark to pull up for you guys is the power consumption figures where the 9900K was scoring around 93 watts and then the 3700X was scoring 75 watts during an IDA64 stress test. Idle power consumption, at least the initial halt state was 23 watts versus 21 watts and then the temperature is 66 degrees versus 61 degrees. So very similar scores except the power efficiency of course does go to the 3700X. So pretty similar scores on everything but the power consumption on load where the 3700X did score a significant victory. So now summing things up, I know there's going to be a few people that are going to ask, why even do these benchmarks? They're not realistic of what the average person is going to do with these CPUs. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to see the way AMD is going at a raw clock for clock comparison and show the differences in IPC where it really came through with the productivity numbers, but not so much the gaming numbers. And that has to show that gaming side of things needs a lot of optimizations and the engines in fact for gaming a lot of those engines even coming out in 2019 are outdated and that is of course showing with those fps figures but another reason i did this comparison is mainly because intel's not going to be on 5 gigahertz forever in fact i'd argue that their next architecture is not going to be anywhere near 5 gigahertz so it's great to see that amd delivered big time with their ipc gains as well as giving much better power efficiency with the latest Zen 2 CPUs. And now that does put the onus back on Intel to now pick up their game and get competitive and start bringing something to the market that's gonna bring better value than the 9900K. As I feel at its price point, the $329 3700X is much better value for money for the average person. It's got better power efficiency, comes included with a really good stock cooler. And I actually tested this in a different video if you wanna check that out. I'll put the link up here for you guys, where the Wraith Prism can pretty much extract the maximum performance out of the 3700X without having to go out and buy a water cooler. But more importantly, one of the best things about the 3700X is the backwards compatibility with the motherboards. You can go out and buy a cheap B350 or B450 motherboard and then couple that with the 3700X and you won't be missing out on a whole lot compared to the X570 chipset and you'll still be getting phenomenal price performance. On Intel's side, you need a Z390 to get the most out of the 9900K. And that's something that I don't think a lot of enthusiasts like because in my opinion, enthusiast tech has always been about getting those budget CPUs and extracting the most out of them via overclocking or tweaking and then having them compare against the flagship CPU traditionally. I mean, times are changing now, but at least that element of getting the most out of your money 
AMD still rings true to that and it's showing in these benchmarks and even in the initial review where I got the 3700X up to 4.3 gigahertz all clock. Anyway, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also stay tuned where I'll be testing out the six core Ryzen 5 3600. Look forward to giving you guys some benchmarks on that. If you wanna see these videos the moment they drop, sub button, ring the bell, it's down there. And I'll also catch you in another tech video very soon. But on your way out, be sure to check out today's video sponsor, Wix, where you can build a professional looking website for absolutely nothing. Links in the description below. With that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.